everyone, it's Matt here. Welcome back to another episode of Savant Tech Talk. Although the proof of work consensus mechanism worked great when Bitcoin was new, the network has grown at an enormous speed. To keep block timing sustained, the Bitcoin system is configured to increase mining difficulty. And as a result, the mining difficulties increase to the point that only the most powerful devices, known as application specific integrated circuits, are capable of mining Bitcoin. To be able to solve the hash functions, they need a lot of computing power as well. With every miner who's not able to compute the hash functions in a timely manner, the energy invested towards that will become useless. And the consequence of this is that energy costs are spiraling out of control, which is seen by many to be terrible for the environment. Although proof of stake mining is less energy demanding, many crypto supporters are still concerned about some of its drawbacks. With proof of stake mining processes, these drawbacks include the concept of centralization because it encourages coin hoarding since those who hold the most coins tend to have the most say when they stake them. As a result, small scale mining operations won't have that much influence on crucial choices made by the bigger nodes. There is a critical need for new mining methods that are not as energy dependent as proof of work and that provide adequate network decentralization. And this is where the proof of capacity consensus mechanism comes into play. Proof of capacity is a blockchain consensus mechanism that allows mining devices on a network to determine mining privileges and validate transactions by utilizing their existing hard drive space. This is contrary to utilizing processing power of the mining device like in proof of work or the miner's cryptocurrency stake like in proof of stake. In today's video, we're gonna look more closely at the proof of capacity consensus mechanism. As always, if you find this topic interesting, then you can let us know by hitting that like button and subscribing to this channel for more videos. You can also let us know if you find it interesting by saying so in the comments section down below. Now let's jump into it. So how does it work? Proof of capacity is just one of the many alternatives to fix the problems pertaining to the excessive energy consumption of proof of work and the encouragement of coin hoarding and proof of stake. Proof of capacity enables mining devices on the blockchain network, usually referred to as nodes, to mine accessible cryptocurrencies by utilizing the free space on their hard drives. For instance, in the proof of work consensus mechanism, the numbers are continually changed in the block header and hashed repeatedly to find the solution value. However, proof of capacity operates by saving a set of probable solutions on the hard drive of the mining device. This is executed even prior to the beginning of mining activity. The number of solution values that can be stored on one's hard drive is dependent on the amount of storage available. As a result, the more storage space one has, the more solution values can be stored. This raises the odds of a miner finding the needed hash value from their set, which then further increases the chances of winning mining rewards. To provide an example, if lottery prizes were dependent on matching a lot of numbers on a winning ticket, then a player with a broader list of feasible solutions would have greater chances of winning. Also, the player is permitted to continue to repeatedly use the lottery ticket block numbers. Burst coin, storage, chia, and spacement are examples of cryptocurrencies that make use of the proof of capacity consensus mechanism. Now let's look at plotting and mining. The proof of capacity protocol is composed of two steps, plotting and mining. Firstly, the hard drive is plotted, where a set of all potential nonce values is generated by repeatedly hashing data, along with the miner's account. Each of these nonces has 8,192 hashes in total, ranging from 0 to 8,191. These hashes are then further comprised of pairs known as scoops, which indicates that two neighboring hashes are merged to produce a pair of two. For example, hash 0 and 1 make up scoop 0, hash two and three makes scoop one, and so on and so forth. Secondly, the next step actually entails the mining process, throughout which a miner is tasked with the calculation of a scoop number. So to give an example, if a miner starts mining and produces a scoop that's numbered 38, that miner will then need to go to that exact scoop of nonce one and utilize the data from the scoop for the computation of a deadline value. This process is executed recurrently for each nonce stored in the miner's hard drive. Once all the deadlines are computed, the one with the shortest value is selected. If you're wondering what a deadline is, a deadline is the amount of time that must pass following the forging of the last block before a miner can forge a new block. During this time, if no other miner has generated a block, 
The miner can then generate one and receive the block reward. Now let's look at the pros and cons. Proof of capacity can make use of any standard hard disk, such as those found in Android-based devices, for example. Also, it's more eco-friendly in comparison to proof of work mining, and there's no need to purchase expensive hardware. The mining data on hard drives can also be easily deleted, allowing them to be utilized for other purposes. With that said, through hard drives, it is probable for malware to hinder mining processes. In addition to this, the mechanism hasn't been embraced by very many developers. Still, if it becomes more popular, there could be a spark of rivalry amongst individuals who construct hard drives that come with larger capacities. So there we have it. Proof of capacity is definitely an intriguing blockchain mechanism since it redefines how mining can be conducted. It's also placed itself amongst the eco-friendlier alternatives to proof of work, and it's garnered more support from crypto supporters due to its systems being perfectly decentralized. Once again, if you enjoyed this video or found it interesting, don't forget to let us know by hitting that like button and subscribing to this channel for more videos. Thank you for watching.